A group of 47 Republican senators with a warning to Iran that despite ongoing nuclear talks with the administration, any deal they make with the United States could be undone without congressional approval. But some Democrats are angry, saying the letter undermines the president's efforts to actually reach a deal here. Mark Dubowitz is the executive director of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, and Kelsey Davenport is the director for nonproliferation policy at the Arms Control Association. It's nice to have you both. Uh, just to set the, the record straight here, if the president if the president signs a treaty with Iran, he will need the Senate. If the president has some sort of executive action or order, technically he doesn't need Congress, but it certainly leaves that deal open to vulnerability. So we don't know what the deal actually could be yet, Mark, but what do you think of this debate about whether or not that letter is appropriate when it's sent to Iran? Jenna, the president has made it very clear that this won't be a treaty. He's also made it very clear that he will not seek the advice and consent of Congress. He will not put this to a vote to Congress. So I think the letter was really directed at the president, not at Iran's supreme leader, and to try and generate a public debate about why the most important national security agreement in decades doesn't deserve a vote in the U.S. Congress and doesn't deserve the input of legislators who represent the American people. What do you think about that, Kelsey, that that, that is what the letter's intention is, and it's certainly sparking that debate about whether or not the American people are being kept in a loop about what exactly is transpiring between the president and Iran? The letter is a blatant attempt to undermine U.S. foreign policy and derail the negotiations. It also sends the wrong message to Iran about Washington's intent to follow through on an agreement. You know, Congress has a role to play. They should oversee the implementation of a deal, but interfering while talks are ongoing is unnecessary and it risks, it risks the outcome of the talks. Kelsey, let me ask you about that because the White House has used the same language, that this, this letter undermines the deal that's taking place, the negotiations. The vice president even said that it's beneath the dignity of an institution he reveres, which is the institution of Congress. Some of that language coming from the White House and Democrats is tougher than the language they use on Iran, which is the number one state sponsor of terror. So is there a double standard there? I think that the Obama administration is committed to preventing Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon, and they know that the only way to do so is to get a good deal with Iran. A deal is within reach that blocks Iran's pathway to nuclear weapons and puts in place intrusive monitoring. And as I said, but, the Republicans right, even, are not answering the question. The what, what do you think about the, the word choices, Kelsey? Like, I, when we look at how the White House is talking about Iran, I know they're in a deal, but Iran's a bad actor. We know that. It seems that the White House is tougher on Republicans here than they are, again, on the number one state sponsor of terror. Well, the Republicans are interfering right now with the Obama administration's negotiations to get a deal. Uh, and that is what the Obama administration should be focused on, getting a deal that prevents a nuclear round Iran, because that's in the best interests of U.S. national security. Mark, the Republicans aren't, aren't offering an alternative to that. Let, Mark, go ahead and pick up on that point. That's been a criticism of the White House as well. Republicans, even Netanyahu, they're not offering another alternative and at the same time interfering with very important work that is being done, according to the White House. Your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are that the Republicans and Democrats in Congress, the Israelis, our Gulf allies, have actually made it very clear that there's an alternative to a bad deal, and that is there is a better deal to be had. And people have spelled out very clearly what a better deal would look like. A better deal would ensure that Iran doesn't have the nuclear threshold capability to be a turn of the screw away from a nuclear weapon that could trigger a cascade of proliferation in the Middle East, multiple Arab countries on a nuclear trigger, and that could be a disaster for U.S. national security and the security of the world. But so Mark, is this a, a distraction? Is, the alternative. is this a distraction, Mark, though? Ambassador Bolton was on our air uh, just about an hour ago, and he said, listen, this is all a sideshow because we really should be focused on Iran. So it, do you, it, is his point valid there And that the Republicans, even attempting this strategy, is taking the eye off the ball of the bigger, the bigger goal, which is not a nuclear Iran? And it's a good question. I mean, is the Netanyahu speech a distraction? Is the letter a distraction? It, it may be, or it may be provoking a very public debate about this Iran deal. It, it may be actually educating Americans about what is in this deal and about what the, the threats that America faces. So I think the, the, what you're seeing is a frustration on the Hill, not only by Republicans, but shared by Democrats. They are being cut out by the administration, that they have no role to play. And I think the letter the speech and a number of these issues are a manifestation of that frustration mm -hmm. that Congress believes they have a role to play. Well, that means that's an interesting point. We'll leave it there. Our viewers can decide. Distraction or perhaps just what we need here on a very important conversation. <laughs> so we'd love to have you both back as always. Mark, Kelsey, thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. so much, Jenna.